Okay, hi everyone, it's Mike Heydrich. I'm going to talk to you about printing the MakerBot T-Rex skull from Thingiverse um, on a 3D printer and the settings that I used to get that done. So the printer that I have is a very inexpensive Creality 3D Ender 3 uh, 3D printer that's about as cheap as they come. Uh, currently they sell for right around $200. In fact, today it's $195. Um, I have the basic printer, I don't have the Pro, and I don't have really any uh, modifications shy of a set of springs that I've changed out. So this printer is sold by a company called Creati 3D. Um, you can do a search on it and um, find a number of places to purchase that. I purchased mine from Sane Smart, shipped from Amazon, uh, but a number of vendors sell it, including Creati 3D themselves that a lot of people recommend. Uh, they purchased from. So, the model that I printed was the T Rex skull by MakerBot that's found on the Thingiverse website. Um, this was a Smithsonian T Rex skull that they modeled. Um, they actually have a whole course uh, around the T Rex skull. Um, this model is actually four different files um, the skull, uh, the lower jaw. Then there's a rod that holds the skull up and then the base that you can see in the picture is how it's mounted. I use Cura to slice my images for 3D printing. And Cura, the latest version, 3.6.0, is the one that I have installed. And they actually have a profile that you can download uh, for the Creality Ender 3 printer. And I just have the stock profile loaded and I really have no changes. Uh, that I've made to the uh, settings for that profile. Um, you can see that I'm using a printing temperature of 200 degrees Celsius and a bed plate temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. Um, this is for printing in PLA. Uh, the filament that I chose for mine was uh, a bronze PLA. And so I print it again at 200 degrees. Um, and I did Increase the size of the image uh, by 150%. I scaled it up. Uh, you can see that here. Uh, that was really just to fill my uh, bed plate and to make it a little larger. Um, it was really important because I think the, the height of the rod that I'm going to print uh, still fit within the envelope of my printer. Um, that's why I chose 150%, not larger. So again, um, I don't have brim or any other support materials turned on. Um, I do have cooling turned on. Um, you see I, I don't have the supports enabled. Um, and the adhesion type is just skirt, which prints a few lines around your print. It really doesn't do anything for adhesion. So once I sliced that uh, model, I saved it to an SD card and then I took it to my printer. And I'm actually currently printing the lower jaw. Um, here is my Ender 3 printer, um, and I am just like just getting started on some of the teeth for the lower jaw. Um, this print currently has been running for seven hours, um, and it looks to be about four fifths of the way done. So it'll finish here tonight um, before I get it done. Uh, I do unspool my filament on a roller bearing plate versus the uh, device they have at the top um, but again this is as plain Jane as the Ender 3 printer can come shy of changing out the springs in the bed um, I couldn't get very good leveling with the factory springs the springs I used came from Harbor Freight uh, which are uh, in a kit of about 200 springs um, I just chose some that were a little longer and about the same size uh, out of that box but anyways, fairly simple. Get your bed uh, leveled. I, I have the glass bed installed on mine, um, and I typically spray that down with hairspray. Uh, and again, I print with a bed temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. And there is no uh, support material anywhere on this print, and it prints pretty amazingly. Um, I get a little bit of Z wobble maybe that shows some of these lines 
Um, there may be other ways to prevent that, but I'm very impressed with the amount of time that this printer prints reliably. Uh, here's another testament to it. This is the wire mesh coin holder uh, skull that's also on Thingiverse, and I scaled it, I believe, about 190%. This print has a 70% infill. Uh, it took 57 hours and 22 minutes to print that skull. Um, it's quite large. I'll, I'll get a can here to show you the reference size. Um, so you can see that it is a fairly skull and it is have it does have it inside. It's almost like a basket. Um, this is also very, very old white PLA. Um, about six years old, in fact. Uh, and it still didn't have any trouble printing. Um, this uh, model, the T-Rex skull that I'm printing, uh, you can see on the top by the jaw, uh, only has a 20% infill rate uh, versus, you know, doing more. And it, it definitely, I believe, shows in the rigidness of the, of the item, but the skull itself is amazing even at 20%. So, anyways, I wanted to show you the Ender 3 printer. Very, very inexpensive, about $200. Uh, rolls of filament. Um, this bronze PLA was about $26, but you can easily buy buy PLA for under $20 from Amazon and a number of other stores. Um, I have Octoprint enabled. I am streaming the uh, video of it, uh, but I do not have it controlling the printer at this time. Uh, really just because I kicked the prints off without enabling that. So but That's another option that you can easily do. Uh, this does not have the latest firmware that's available. Some of the brand new printers are coming with a newer version of the firmware um, that leads to temperature uh, protection, doesn't let you overheat the printer, but this one does not have that. Um, eventually, maybe I'll flash that firmware. Okay, so Mike Hydrick wanted to show you the printing of the T-Rex skull on the very cheap Ender 3 printer. Thanks.